pleasure to be here because um, this is, in, in my mind, really what politics should be all about. I'm actually from Sacramento, not San Francisco. And, and too often in my hometown, politics is about lobbyists and big money and, and glitzy ads. And, and that's what I feel like we need to change. And, and so it's so exciting to me to see grassroots folks out here having a picnic talking about politics. So I applaud all of you for, for the work that you do and, and for inviting all of us to, to come speak. Uh, I've been working for the past 18 years as a voting rights advocate and, and, and on campaign finance reform issues with groups like Common Cause and have come to the conclusion that we really need an elections expert in the office of Secretary of State because there are some, some changes and modernizations that we need to make that have been taking far too long. So for example, the, the online registration program, and, and I don't know where Lee Ling Yee is, who, you know, who, who championed that in the legislature um, and Common Cause worked on as well, it took four years really longer than it should have. That bill was originally introduced in 2008 and, and drafted by Darren Chesson, the, the staff person on, on the committee there, and actually signed into law by Governor Schwarzenegger after some research we presented him about how well it had worked in Arizona. And it didn't go into effect because California didn't have a statewide voter registration system um, called VoteCal, and, and that's been delayed for far too long. And, and there are other reforms that have already been passed that are pending implementation of VoteCal, like same-day voter registration and pre-registration of high school students. Deborah Bowen and Hannah Beth Jackson have a bill in the legislature right now to take that down to 15 years of old age so that when you get your learner's permit uh, at age 15 and a half, we could register you to vote. A far more efficient system, get everybody in. And these would be significant reforms for California that need to be implemented by the next Secretary of State. And I'm offering myself as, as someone with a lot of experience in these issues um, to get that done. Because right now, California is 48th in a recent US Census report in terms of voter participation. That's not just embarrassing, but they're real world implications of if we're not having young people, if we're not having the diversity of our state reflected in our electorate, we're not making the smart decisions in public policy that we could be and should be. So the stakes are high and we need to fix that by, by modernizing our systems and reducing the bureaucratic barriers to voting. But I think what's even worse is, is many, especially young people, um, are on the verge of losing hope and, and getting into a place of cynicism and not wanting to vote because they feel it doesn't matter. And things have always been bad, but I think it got much worse after the Citizens United ruling, which has just sent the message to people that not only are you people, but so are corporations. They are people too, right? Mitt Romney, my friend, seems to have that opinion. And that almost dehumanizes the rest of us. If they're people, what are we? And, and do our votes matter? And do elected officials listen to the rest of us or do they listen to the lobbyists and the powerful interests and the campaign donors? So I think we need uh, some politicians and some elected officials that'll push back on Citizens United. And as Secretary of State, my commitment would be to travel to every congressional district in the state of California and hold a public he hearing and ask that member of Congress to come explain what they've done to deal with the Citizens United ruling. I think they ought to be supporting a constitutional amendment to overturn it. And I also want to ask them what they'll do to restore the Voting Rights Act, which has just been decimated by the Supreme Court. And we cannot let these things stand. We have to do something about it. So uh, if I'm elected, you can count on seeing me here again, and we'll be asking Tom McClintock to explain himself to his voters. Does he think that corporations are people? And are there any of them in the audience there today? Because uh, he needs to answer that question, and we need to hold him accountable. And that's what I want to do um, in my role as Secretary of State. So uh, I appreciate the opportunity to come introduce myself to you. Uh, I look forward to talking to all of you over the course of the next year. And, and most importantly, I want to thank you all for the important work that you're doing as activists in the Democratic Party. Thanks. Mm -hmm. State Senator Alex Padilla, and he's going to be introduced by Diane Bennett, who's the secretary of the Democratic Central Committee. First of all, thank you all for being here. Has this been a wonderful evening for Tuolumne County Democrats? Three candidates for California Secretary of 
State, and one of these gentlemen is going to be our next Secretary of State. Now, we are so often feeling ignored by our statewide candidates and our statewide officers, and look at what we have today. Thank you to all three of you. And I want to thank the committee for giving me the opportunity to introduce to you State Senator Alex Padilla. This event began with sort of an email from Senator Padilla's office asking to visit Tuolumne County as part of his pledge to visit all of California's 58 counties during his campaign for Secretary of State. Today, he is making good on that pledge. He has been in Mariposa, he's met with our county elections officer, he's here, and tomorrow in San Andreas. I have not met Senator Padilla or Senator Yee or Derry Cressman, but I have been honored today to meet all three of the gentlemen. Let me tell you, Senator Padilla is a native of Southern California. His parents were immigrants from Mexico. They met in the United States, married, and started a family. Alex attended public schools in Southern California and went on to get a degree in mechanical engineering from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. I can't even say that, let alone think about doing it. And he still serves on the governing board of MIT. After a short stint in the engineering field, Alex, at the ripe old age of 25, ran for the Los Angeles City Council and won. Several years later, when he had matured to the age of 28, he was elected president of the Los Angeles City Council, the first Latino to hold that position, and obviously the youngest person ever. And while he was on the Los Angeles City Council, he served as a director, uh, I'm going to get it wrong, he represented the president of the California League of Cities. Uh, Alex often says that the move from politics to, to politics from engineering made sense because both are about solving problems. In 2006, Alex Padilla ran for the California State Senate and was re-elected again in 2010 with 70% of the vote in a district that had only a 54% Democratic registration. Among Senator Padilla's duties in the Senate, as chairman of the Senate Energy, Utilities, and Communications Committee, where he is addressing global warming and working to create a greener, more sustainable economy. He authored the legislation in California that required restaurants to post calorie information on their menus. I'm actually glad we didn't have that here tonight. <laughs> and he also authored the legislation that increased penalties and increased enforcement for uh, regulate tobacco sales to minors. And I was speaking with some of our local people and that has had a major impact locally as illegal sales to minors in Tuolumne County has gone down in the last two to three years. With all of this, I'm going to cut it short and just say, I want you to welcome to Tuolumne County State Senator Alex Padilla. Wow, what an introduction. I feel like I have uh, some expectations to live up to now. Uh, well, thank you to all of you for uh, making time out of uh, what I know is a, a you know, busy day in, day out, week in, week out for all of us. We have work obligations or maybe family obligations or other hobbies we can tend to to sort of come spend uh, an evening at the park with three uh, people seeking office is a commitment on your part to uh, be part of our civic process and uh, try to you know, influence who our representatives are and the direction of our communities and of our states. You know, I wanted to take the first few minutes to kind of give you a little bit of my background which uh, was already done in the introduction, so that you know that it's not just a state senator from Southern California that's uh, standing here. And, and I'll get to why I'm running for Secretary of State uh, in a moment. But to let you know sort of who I am, where I'm from, and, and what I'm about. In many ways, I do feel like the American dream story come true. My parents are immigrants to this country. My father worked in diners throughout Los Angeles for the better part of 35 years. And my mother used to clean houses. My father, by the way, is a retired member of HERE, so it's a union uh, contract and union benefits that allowed us to be born at a Kaiser Hospital down in Panorama City, put a roof over our head, we had health care and, and clothes on our back and all those things. And I carry that with me into my, my 
philosophy of public service. I did have an opportunity to go to MIT and, and get a degree in mechanical engineering. And when the economy wasn't doing so well in Southern California, I asked myself that fundamental question of do I just leap to that next engineering job or do I kind of see what else is out there? Uh, and in my exploration, before I landed in public service, I actually spent a summer working at the University of the Pacific in Stockton, where yeah. we took one of the days, about a group of students, I was a counselor at the time, to Columbia State Park. I just saw the map, and I'm like, wait a minute, I've been here before. Yeah. Maybe not to this park, but to, to the county. And that's a, a big part of the experience that I'm getting as I'm going throughout the state, visiting all 58 counties. You know, I've, I've been to a lot of places before as a city council member, my involvement with the League of Cities, as a legislator, as a campaign organizer, or, uh, or even just as a tourist. Um, and, and I know from those experiences that every county is different and every community is different. So why am I running for Secretary of State? Most people would recognize that the responsibility of that office, uh, the biggest responsibility is serving as California's chief elections officer, maintaining the integrity, but also the openness of our electoral system. Now I think Deborah Bowen has done a good job, but respectfully, I think we can do better and I think the state deserves better. I plan to be a very proactive Secretary of State let me give you a couple of facts and figures. Last November, more than 10 million eligible Californians did not vote. Half of them registered to vote and just didn't show up. We gotta fix that. The other half, eligible to register, but still not registered, and so therefore can't show up even if they wanted to. I'm running for Secretary of State to fix that. We've had some great progress in recent years, like Senator, Ye, Senator Yee's bill from last year that really finally closed the loop on the online registration that the state's been working towards for a few years. I quietly passed a bill of my own that I'm pretty proud of. You know, when we, did, when we created Motor Voter, the federal government sort of directed every state in the nation to pick at least two departments or agencies to serve as what we, what we refer to as voter registration agencies or departments that interact with the public that in the process of doing other business, you can, in a streamlined fashion, register to vote. DMV is obvious. We all register our cars, we get our driver's license, etc. In Pete Wilson's infinite wisdom, he declared the second department to be the Board of Equalization. <laughs> not community colleges, not EDD, not, you know, we could have picked, made some better choices. So we've done so informally over the years. I had a bill last year that codified the UC system, the community colleges, CSUs, EDD, Veterans Affairs, so many others to be voter registration agencies, and we added one that I'm particularly proud of, the Health Benefits Exchange. As California's been the leader, the national leader in implementing Obamacare, and we have millions of people that are today and previously have been uninsured coming in to sign up for health care. If they're otherwise eligible, we're already giving name, address, date of birth, signature, etc. information. Let's register people to vote. We can quickly add another million plus people to the voter rolls in California. But the job doesn't just end with registering people to vote. Then we've got to get creative on motivating people to turn out. And that's where this 58 county tour comes in. As I mentioned, I knew coming in to this campaign that every community is different, every county is different. And every county that I go to, you know, um, this is the fun part of it, right? Barbecues and picnics and dinners and meeting with activists because it's in our blood. It's what we do. But I also spend time meeting with registrar recorders, county clerks, whatever the title is in each and every county to do the homework of what's working, what's not working. How do we strengthen the partnership between the local elections officials and administrators and the Secretary of State's office? Because there's a lot we can do to really modernize, modernize how we make elections and, and participation open to as many people as possible while maintaining the proper safeguards. And so I'm, I'm eager to share the best practices from one county to the next, whether it's vote by mail, regional voting centers, ballot drop-off facilities, you know, using technology in a number of ways uh, to really maximize the opportunities for people to participate. Because this I know, California is considered a safe blue state. The more we get people to register, and the more we get people to vote, our state's gonna get bluer. And it's only a matter of time before Tuolumne follows the path of 
Ventura County, that used to be red and is now blue. San Diego, that used to be red, is now blue. Riverside County, used to be red, is now blue. It's only a matter of time. So I appreciate the hospitality, the, the warmth with which you've uh, not just uh, allowed me to come visit, but invited uh, my colleagues that are also running uh, for this office to have this conversation because uh, Derek Cressman's right. This is what it's all about. So thank you for the opportunity to make a first impression. Uh, look forward to answering some questions informally when the program ends, we'll, we'll be sticking around. Uh, and uh, yes, I promise, uh, if I'm fortunate enough to win uh, the, the position of Secretary of State, I will be back here and to all 58 counties as Secretary of State. Thank you very much. Um, our final speaker this evening uh, is going, I, I know for sure, is from San Francisco, and that is Senator Leland Yee, and he's going to be introduced by Spider Cantley, who's a member of both the Central Committee and the club. Did everyone enjoy dinner? Yeah. There's a guy over here, Evan Royce, that wouldn't stand up, but I'll acknowledge that he's our supervisor. And I did say to him earlier, I don't always agree with him, but I do respect him. Now, to get down to practical matters, we had some help setting all of this up earlier today, two o'clock or so, and I hope all of those great volunteers and helpers will hang around so that we can put it all away. We won't have the rotary mad at us. But anyway, in a nutshell, this is a real pleasure for me. Uh, most of you are aware of the fact that I've been involved peripherally in San Francisco and Bay Area politics for a lot of years. And it was as a result of that we were able to bring uh, Gavin Newsom, uh, Lieutenant Governor Gavin Newsom, to Sonora a little better than a year ago. He was very well received, he answered questions, the crowd was great, and it just showed that, hey, that we made Tuolumne County and possibly the wrong thought is out there about us, but there's a lot of active, loving, Democrats that we're proud of. Now, I'm, I'm proud to have the chance to introduce our next speaker. Um, no notes, because it's personal. Involvement in San Francisco on my own and on some pretty key legislators from both sides really matters. And uh, Leland Yi came here I believe he was three years old from China with his family. I know I could get into all of the interim years, but the fact of the matter is that in 1988, and for eight years, he was on the board San Francisco Unified School District. So right away, that tells you that his involvement with children, with students, everything involving education is for real. He's been in the trenches, he's worked at it, he'd be very successful at it. His next venture in and around the Bay Area is with the San Francisco Board of Supervisors for six years. And there's probably a lot of folks right here in, in the park that could realize, well, the experience on the San Francisco Board of Supervisors is really an experience. Evan's got it easy, let me tell you. San Francisco can be nutsville at times, but a lot of the things that comes out of the city, legislation-wise, and even uh, recently with the Supreme Court uh, decisions pertaining to marriage and so on, that came right out of uh, San Francisco and all the efforts of our Lieutenant Governor. But after six years, active years in the Assembly, Senator Yee didn't, excuse me, Assemblyman and uh, Supervisor Lee didn't just talk about it. They had a lot of fiscal and budget items that were on their table. So what he did, as opposed to what others don't do, he went out to all of the districts to personally talk about budget items and what the people in those districts in San Francisco and what have you felt about them. So when you go out there one-on-one -on -one and you talk finance issues and you hear the complaints, the worries, what the future's gonna be, you really get an insight as to what folks feel. And that's just a little bit of what he did while he was on Board of Supervisors. Shortly thereafter, I believe that was earlier in uh, 02, the assembly had him for four years. And I'm gonna sort of sum up what he's done, but went through the assembly, again, very visible, very involved in people issues. That's us, folks, people issues. 
not just big business issues, but us. Collectively, individually, he's done that. Then he was elected to the Senate. He's in his second term now. Landslide wins. Now, when you get a landslide win, especially in your second term, that speaks volumes. Because District 8 people, San Franciscans, uh, Northern San Mateo County can be very critical if they don't feel you're representing them properly. A key point, school district, San Francisco supervisors, the assembly, the Senate, people issues. I mean, that's health, that's education, that's environment, that's wages and working people, that's labor issues, that's a full gamut of the type of things that makes you representative of the people that expect you to represent them. And two things that speak volumes. In that period of time, the senator was involved in 164 pieces of legislation. Not just putting his name on the line, but being involved in what it meant to get a bill to pass. 124 of the 164 pieces of legislation became law. Now that's a big point. 124 became law. I'd like that to register with all of you because it really matters. But there's one other key thing. You've heard two or three uh, mentions this evening about the voter registration law. It's funny that I'm to talk about voter registration online. All my friends here in Twainheart know that I'm an online dinosaur. So I'm the crazy guy to be talking about it. But Leland brought that as a piece of legislation so that we're going to have registration online to increase the involvement of the individual voter out there that up until that point hadn't taken advantage of it. Now here's a number. In the first 45 days after that was passed, 800,000, 800,000 folks, Californians, registered as a result of that piece of legislation. And more importantly, because of that additional 800,000, we now have the supermajority in Sacramento that will allow us to do some things that previously wouldn't have been possible where people legislation is concerned. And as far as I'm concerned, the senator for that one thing, besides all the other things he's done in his career, deserves a real hand. So my comments are coming from my heart because of my involvement in the Bay Area for years pertaining to various political things, right, wrong, or otherwise, Senator Yee, Leland Yee, typifies what it takes to get the job done. We've got great candidates that spoke tonight, so this is just me talking personally. I can't say enough about the activities, the success, the manner in which he, which he handles himself in various situations, so it's a pleasure for me to say I'd love to see the Senator come up here and speak to you. He's a special guy. Senator, go for it. Well, you know, I got to tell you, Spider, I might as well just sit back down because you just gave my speech away. So, um, but, but, but I really am thrilled and really pleased to come back here again. And I say that because I just came from Stanislaus about a week or so ago, and so many of those individuals who are there are now here. And it seems as if what's happening out in this area is that there, there's so much friendship and camaraderie that it's just absolutely amazing. I think I mentioned a couple times already that one of the things that is an interesting observation on my part is that oftentimes when you go to political events, you know, people are kind of grumpy, people are not smiling, but somehow here, and I don't know if it's the air, or the sunlight or whatever, everybody smiles here. Everybody's laughing, and, and it, it is something that is rather contagious because I will tell you that um, it is uh, really a God's place here, and I, uh, I'm going to tell everyone in the Senate how wonderful this place is. 
I just want to recognize uh, Alex Padilla and Derek Cressman. They're just fine individuals, fine, fine individuals. Uh, Alex is a colleague of mine, and we work well together in the Senate. Uh, Derek, uh, with Common Cause, uh, Common Cause and I have worked on many, many issues, and, and there's fine individuals. So at the end of the day, you know, just vote. Just make sure at least you vote. But one of the things I want to do is to kind of not talk about what is it that I'm going to do as Secretary of State. Because as a child psychologist as and a father, oftentimes I say, you know, judge me not what I'm going to do, but judge me what I've done. Because as a psychologist, I know the best predictor of behavior is what that individual's done. So let me just talk a little bit about my passion for voting and my passion for the office of Secretary of State. I came to this country when I was three years old. Uh, we didn't have a penny. Uh, my mother uh, didn't speak a word of English. My father uh, was able to uh, you know, get us over here because he was a veteran. And back in those days, as now, if you fought in the war, uh, you were in fact given citizenship. And then more importantly, you were allowed to bring your family members over. And so when I came here, all of a sudden I had a public education, a rather good one. Uh, my mom uh, was a seamstress, uh, worked hard. Uh, my father worked in a grocery store and later in the post office. So my mother and my father was able to give life to me and to my sisters. And so when I think about that, I think about well, what is it that I ought to do to try and say to this country, this state, what a wonderful place it is, and how do I honor it? And I think part of honoring it is to understand the responsibility that we have, you know, as citizens, that you ought to register to vote, and you ought to cast a vote. You ought to understand our system of government. You ought to understand the importance of civic engagement and civic participation. And I know the statistics and I know the stories, the horror stories, about how many individuals are eligible to register to vote and they don't. How many individuals can, in fact, go to vote and they don't vote. And so, over the years, on not only at the Board of Supervisors Assembly and the Senate, and I thought about ways in which we can increase the participation. And so when we were working and thinking about that particular issue, we thought about how cumbersome it is to register to vote. You know, you have to kind of go to City Hall, and then you have to maybe uh, go at a time uh, when the City Hall is open. And a lot of time that may not fit, you know, our lifestyle or where we live. Uh, your City Hall may be miles and miles away. And then you also have to kind of think about, do I want to be accosted by someone, you know, when I'm going shopping and I got to rush to just get that milk and get that bread and go home because the wife's going to be yelling and screaming at you because why were you so late? Because kids need the milk and they need the bread. But when you start thinking about all of the difficulties and challenges of registering to vote, then you start to begin to understand why many individuals just don't register. And that's how we came upon this notion of online voter registration. Let's make it easier for individuals to register to vote. And that's what we did. We authored that particular bill to allow in the state of California for individuals to just simply get online and register to vote in a secure